The Stock of the Day is brought to you by IG, Australia's number one CFD provider. With over 17,000 markets and extended trading hours, turn US earnings season volatility into opportunity. Get started at IG.com. And our stock of the day is Bendigo and Adelaide Bank. It's posted a 9.7% rise in full year net profit after tax to $545 million. Cash earnings dipping around 2.5% to $562 million. Customer deposits rising more than 3% to $68 billion, while residential lending rose around 3% to $60.4 billion. Full year total dividend was up more than 3% to $0.63 cents a share. Let's get a little further detail. Look, not, not a huge uh, reaction on the, the market today um, off the back of that result. Of course, uh, the whole banking sector has been an intense focus, particularly here on the call, given where those valuations have gone. Luke, let's start with you then. How do you see Bendigo and Adelaide and, I guess, in the mix, the broader mix there of the banks? Yeah, I think um, pretty good result. Cash earnings in line, div B. Um, NIMBY, bad doubtful debt is really low, which is kind of, you know, a bit scary. I, I think I don't know how, how they're so low, but they are. Um, and, and, yeah, all going to plan except for maybe valuation. Um, I, I think Bendigo is going to be investing a bit of money by the sounds of it over the next few years, a bit more than maybe the market was expecting. I think that coupled with it probably needed to be a strong big beat to justify the val here um, still looks really expensive to me. Um, I would have said the same thing to you in June, though, and it's up another, you know, dollar since then. So, uh, what do I know, Andrew? What do I know? Well, well, I, th- <laughs> you, I think you know quite a bit. What does the market know? I mean, as you say, it just keeps defying that gravity, doesn't it? Uh, as yeah. you mentioned earlier, it continues to rise. I think this, at this point, like you know, in the economic cycle, I can see the appeal of banks, and I can see, I can certainly see the. Uh, the, the appeal of owning any of the any of our six sort of listed banks here in Australia, uh, I think it's still kind of evident that you know with the capital requirements and and the extra capital that the Bendigo Adelaide Bank as well as obviously Bank of Queensland have to carry, um, you know maybe the big four have a little bit more sensitivity on the upside. Um, if we do see pick up in volumes and continued low bad and doubtful debts and and you know expansion in margins, but look, I think for the, the price you're paying for any of these banks at the moment. You have to ask yourself: Are you really getting that value, and how much of the future is already in the price? And um, you know, from my perspective, it's quite a lot. Mm. Okay, so if you're in it, Luke, what do you do? Uh, I think it's a hold for me. Um, with maybe a bit of a sell, take a bit of profits. Wouldn't get carried away selling my bank exposure at the moment. Uh, don't really want to be underweight. Oh, I think that's that's maybe a bit of a recipe for a disaster. But certainly, uh, yeah, I can understand why you'd only be neutral here or, you know, happy to take a few profits and, and uh, maybe come back to the stock in, in 50 cents a dollar, $2 lower. Yep. Okay. Mate. Yeah. I mean, they don't call me a bear for nothing. <laughs> um, oh, look, Bendigo Bank has problems. Uh, I mean, it's, the banks are not anything special, right? Um, they used to have a few extra bits. They divested all of them out. Now they're a pure mortgage play. Mm. Um, Macquarie is undercutting all of them. Um, so the big four are fighting back. Interestingly, they're only offering cuts to new mortgage clients, <laughs> not the existing ones. Um, so there is a mortgage war starting, which means margins are going to go down. Banks don't start a mortgage war because things are good. So things are tightening. They can see their customers struggling. So I suspect that's going to play out. Well, and now now they're pulling back on those term deposit. That's right. Uh, That's the first thing they do. Uh, It kind of helps their margin while they wait. Mm. They're almost locking RBA into a rate cut cycle. RBA doesn't have much of a choice. Mm. I like what the banks are doing. It's a they are cartel. (laughs) They're a cartel without being a cartel. Um, So somehow they always follow each other. Everyone takes a turn. First one, yeah. First one does one, and then everyone follows. So yeah, it's not a cartel. but I think the valuation, the reason the valuations have gone to these extreme levels is the same reason what's happening in the U.S. market. The performance of the U.S. market is mainly driven by the techs. You can take a handful of techs out of it and the rest looks abysmal, right? So the, similarly in Australia, you can take three stocks. They own 22% of the index, BHP, CBA, CSL. Now, BHP was great for the market because it's nearly 10% of the index. You just got to jam it up mm. and the index goes up. But of course, the iron ore has collapsed. 
So it's really hard for them to hold that. So the, the global passive funds had to move out of BHP, but wanted to hold the ETFs together because they've got a massive equity holding. So CBA became the play. So now everyone plays that banking sector. Now CBA, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to value it. CBA is paying you right now, if you buy CBA shares, it's paying you less than what the US government pays you in a 10-year bond yield. One is zero risk. Mm. One is an equity mm. in a bank in a slowing economy. So you can see where the valuations are out of sync. Um, I think the banking sector is expensive. The regionals are always more risky rent. So you've seen weaker results out of Bank of Queensland, Bendigo, they'll always be more struggling than the big boys. And the big boys, CBA is the clear winner. Uh, the market loves it, always pays a premium for it compared to the rest. And CBA is expensive. So I think the overall market is a struggle. But no one's going to care. If you bought banks really cheap. So you're not going to care what anyone says. You're going to hold it. And that's fine. But if you're in the regionals, I think you have to be a bit more skeptical. I think you've got to be careful. If you're in Bendigo or Bank of Queensland, I think you should be moving. Um, look, all the banks are expensive. Macquarie is even more expensive, technically speaking. Uh, but they're going to hold up, right? The government gives you a guarantee. So if, if you want to keep the banking exposure, I would probably say move to Macquarie. Expect to lose money, but it doesn't matter. It'll come back. So you're okay in the longer term. I think the smaller banks, the regional banks will see much more volatility in a pullback and all banks are expensive. So I don't want to be in banks, but if you're in banks, I suggest you manage your risk. So don't be in Bendigo. So you'd be selling it. I would be selling Bendigo. If you look at either, I, I, I would look at someone like uh, like a Macquarie. Yeah. It's expensive, but it's a much more of a listed private equity. They, well, yeah, they tend to, to do a lot better. Okay. All right. Interesting take then. So uh, that is our stock of the day is sell from Nathan and a whole from Luke. The stock of the day was brought to you by IG. Turn volatility into opportunity this US earnings season with extended trading hours on over 110 key US shares. Get started at IG.com.